<laughs> While watching these movies, have you ever wondered, why do all superheroes have to wear costumes like these embarrassing tights? It's because we're so used to the superhero genre that if someone were to walk down the street wearing something like this, they'd be looked at strangely, not because they're a superhero, but because of the outfit. Then how come not just one or two, almost all superheroes wear form-fitting tights? Everything, spandex. Let's think about it from a logical perspective, grounded in reality and science. Perhaps the first reason that comes to mind is activity. Lovely. Most athletes, gymnasts, and people who do activities that involve a lot of physical movement like yoga or Pilates wear clothes that are tight and stretchy. Being a superhero also requires a lot of physical movement, so it makes sense that they wear something comfortable to move in. Air resistance cannot be ignored, especially for superheroes using high speeds. Characters that move really fast, like Quicksilver or Flash, are going to have a lot of drag when they're wearing flapping clothing. So they want to wear the tightest clothing they can to reduce drag and also minimize friction with the air, which will reduce the temperature of the surface to some extent. Silica-based quartz sand fabric, abrasion resistant, heat resistant. This would also apply to characters that fly around, like Superman or Black Adam or Spider-Man, who's not actually flying, but gliding through the city. Of course, characters that move quickly underwater, like Aquaman or Mera, also seem like a reasonable choice for a form-fitting costume. And here's the interesting thing about it. It used to be that these costumes were really thin, smooth surfaces, like spandex, but now they've gone to a material that has a series of patterns. If you look closely, Superman's suit has a pattern like this, and Spider-Man's suit has a uniform pattern of tiny little dimples. There's something similar with this kind of pattern. It's the science of the surface of a golf ball. The surface of a golf ball has regular depressions called dimples. These dimples make the golf ball fly farther and faster. A golf ball with a smooth surface has a low pressure area at the back that holds less air as it speeds up, sucking it in like a vacuum cleaner, slowing it down and reducing its distance. But if dimples added on the surface, it creates a small vortex of air that reduces the low pressure at the back of the ball. Dimpled golf balls are known to fly nearly twice as far as smooth golf balls. Maybe superheroes have learned the science of this over time, and to reduce friction and increase speed, they changed their previously smooth material into a series of patterns that create a dimpled effect. I'm a Kryptonian. Believe it or not, anyway. Another important reason for a tight costume is to protect the costume. It wouldn't be much fun to be a superhero if your costume got torn and ruined every time you fought a villain, and you had to buy a new one every time. It wouldn't be a problem to a billionaire like Batman or Iron Man, but not every superhero has the luxury like them. In fact, simply to avoid this problem, it might be better to minimize the amount of skin you cover. Like the Hulk, or worse, Dr. Manhattan. But if you decide to wear a costume for any reason, whether it's your childhood fantasy or just for the fashion, a well-fitting clothes just like spandex might be the best protection. You know that if you fill a plastic bag with water and put it over a flame, it will never burn? Similar to this principle, if you're a superhero like Superman, whose body is stronger than any substance, your costume will be able to withstand fire and external impacts like guns and knives best when it's snugly attached to your body. One more reason is that they have to wear them under their clothes. Many superheroes have their alter ego to live as a normal person. They can't always go to a locker room to change whenever something happens. So they have to wear their superhero costume on their body at all times in order to be able to go out in a hurry. If it's too thick and clunky, it's going to be hard to put on more clothes on top of it. So it makes sense that the superhero costume should be as thin as possible in order to wear it under everyday clothes. 
Beyond these practical reasons, we can also trace the origins of tight costumes back through comics history. The comics we're familiar with today began in the 1930s. The poster child for this new boom in comics was Superman, who wore tight costumes, red underwear outside, and even a big red cape. The origin of this costume was the costume of Jules Lyotard, a top French acrobat who first performed aerial acrobatics in the 1800s. He made his own tight costumes because he didn't want his flapping costume to get in the way during his performance. Starting with him, these tight outfits became common not only in the circus, but also in sports, gymnastics, and dance. The costume worn in ballet or gymnastics is called a leotard, which is from the name Jules Leotard. Superman is a concept that takes the tight outfit of leotard, adds the iconic thong of strongmen, and finishes it off with the cape that circus performers wear before they begin their act. Superman's massive success inspired many other comics to follow the look, and later, low-budget movies and TV series adapted the costume into live action just as it from the comics without much considerations. But it was the comics themselves that brought a new twist to these skimpy costumes. In the early 2000s, Marvel Comics began introducing new superhero origins under the title with Ultimate as a sort of reboot. The Ultimates, written by Mark Miller and drawn by Brian Hitch in 2002, was a big changer with all new costumes, realistic imagery, and stories. This comic featured costumes that fit each character's personality and background rather than just being a bunch of colorful spandex and gave the characters a reason for their characters and costumes. Ryan Maynarding, Marvel's head of visual development, is the man who brought this concept to the modern superhero genre. His drawings are used as guideline concept for many of the films, and he plays a major role in determining the look and feel of all Marvel characters. As he pushed the realism of the Ultimate Comics further, much of the tight and colorful costumes of the past disappeared in favor of more realistic costumes. Scarlet Witch is one of the examples, who has settled into a very different costume than her tights in the comics, or some other characters who even dressed in everyday clothes. The essence of superhero genre is compelling characters. And obviously, what they wear is a big part of that. Let us hope there will more convincing, well-reasoned superhero costumes in the future. <coughs> I'm Red. See you next time. It still fits. <laughs>